Hey guys, welcome to a, another commentary done by Diggity. This is going to be a very special series of games that I'm bringing to you. That special shout out in particular to Jayun and also to Gypsy for getting me these replays. I am I can't explain how flabbergasted I am. So excited to be able to cast these. These are the top North American players just doing some pickup team battles, I think for practice. For general team battles, moving the future, rogues gallery, down the line, things like that. And essentially, these set of players are the best of the best in North America, in my opinion. Upper right-hand corner, we have Boa starting as the yellow Protoss to start. Bottom left-hand corner, we have uh, Giergiari. I'm not even sure how to pronounce that, but that's Crossy. You can check out Crossy's stream. That's the other wonderful thing about this, is one of the things I always wanted to do. The main reason I am doing this channel is because I wanted to promote Foreigner Brood War, and I wanted to make sure you guys knew that we're really sitting in a golden age of Brood War accessibility and viewership. You've got see, the Coach People League to learn StarCraft. You've got these guys out here that are streaming StarCraft. You've got Rogues Gallery for North American StarCraft. Of course, we have ASL out there that Tasteless and Artosis are casting. Point being, I feel like we're in a... I don't know that people realize that they're looking, oh man, the old golden days. We're actually in a new golden era at the moment. I'm not sure how long it's going to last, and I'm not sure. Maybe we can build on it, and I'm hoping people appreciate it. But these are the guys I wanted to highlight as well. Unfortunately, starting this game off with Boa, Boa is the one guy I don't have his stream. So if anybody has Boa's Twitch stream, let me know. Crossy, on the other hand, this is Crossy's alt, by the way. He's going to be starting, again, bottom left corner. Looks like he has opened up actually nine hatch, interestingly enough. So... And I haven't, I think I saw this once recently in a match with Art of Turtle. This is a new build. I'm not sure this is a new build, but this is a build I've seen that works pretty well against the gate opener at the very least. It looks like Bo is going to be able to scout up and see that nine hatchery based on kind of how morphed that hatchery is as he's crossing it and also seeing the spawning pool. He's going to have the probe scout. One advantage of doing that is you don't have to worry about that probe scout getting into your natural and doing a disruption. We did see a forge first opener and a nexus upon seeing that uh, hatchery down after that. And that should be good timing. I like what Bo is doing here. He's actually sitting behind the mineral line looking to attack. I believe you can, yeah, you can see attack that probe behind the mineral line. It actually did significant damage there. Might even get a kill. Working on it against six health left. But Crossy's going to go ahead and just back that drone off and ha ha ha. Used all that micromanagement, and I just turned to do extractor full health again. It's got a, now that, doesn't that probe look cheapish here? Just looks cheapish. Anyway, you can check out Crossy, by the way, on twitch.tv, cross IEE. -E. So you spell the words C R O S S I E E. Check out his stream. Gateway is down in the meantime, no cannon just yet. There's that first cannon. And Crossy already going ahead and grabbing his hatchery at the nine o'clock base. So it looks like he is opening up at least some form of. Three hatch, it is possible we're going to see that 973 current meta. And this is the other thing I'm excited about with these guys is I'm excited to see what they're what they're up to as far because I know these guys are extremely intelligent players. Really, it, it, when I think of just like the top players, these are the top guys. These are the top guys in North America. So I'm curious what and they're all extremely intelligent, well practiced. You'll see them at the high levels of BSL. You'll see them at the top levels in the, well top levels among foreigners outside of Korea. Uh, on the ladder. So I'm interested to see what kind of builds that they're executing. It, it'll be a, hopefully a learning experience for me as well. We do have, it looks like, <laughs> go ahead and see that building, a Hydro Sten at the natural expansion. I believe Boa did in fact scout that. Yeah, he got a good eye on it as he was making his way across. He's going to exit with that probe. We do have an Overlord making its way to that bottom right hand corner. So it is possible we could see a Mutalisk. Oftentimes when you see this sort of action, it's Oftentimes possible to see a Mutalisk switch back after Lair, but I do believe this is just going to be three hatch Hydra. It looks So we do have seven drones here. We already have one drone here, and if we see another drone make its way up to that nine o'clock base, that will be technically the nine. Well, is that nine? So yeah, the nine, and then seven, and then three build, although one drone short right here, which suggests we're going to see a front door bus potentially. Or a pullback after a threatened bust back into macro. And here's the thing with this forge. I almost feel like this is a... Protoss keep doing this. They keep going for this level 1 weapons upgrade. And every once in a while they can get enough zealots and other things on the front door to counter it. Crossy is going to be facing, it looks like, zealot leg speed. Because that Hydralist then was spotted, it looks like Bo's going to go ahead and skip 
gateway and is going to get that Citadel of Adun and gets out leg speed and going for more or less a timing attack. Not a timing attack, but de absolutely, well, sometimes a timing attack, but definitely wants to have those zealots with leg speed and weapons one nearby on the way to help deal with this as best as possible. And there's kind of a follow up you can do. Um, but in the meantime, the Hydralisks are already making their way to the front door. This gateway is most certainly going to go down, maybe very likely going to lose weapons one, unless Boa just micros this perfectly. And also, Boa needs to dedicate some cannons to the front. Otherwise, this could be a very quick game and a bust. This is the thing that Protoss are, be are fearing these days, just well executed. And it looks like, because of the lack of cannons, Crossy sneaking in, doing a little bit of damage. The Zealot's now coming off the line. Some nice micro right at the edge of cannon range. And then backing off. But let's see if Boa plants some additional cannons down. He's already getting an additional gateway. He's actually keeping the cannons rather light. He's just going to try to rely on Zealot leg speed to get it done. So it is possible that with some decent micromanagement and a bit of a flub, actually moving out the Zealots now, with that Zealot leg speed, taking a little bit, a lot of damage before that Zealot leg speed's coming online. And it looks like those Zealots are going to get out microed a little bit by these Hydralisks. More pouring up now. Actually, a couple battle drones right there being pulled back from the lines. The Zealots actually taking more damage than they needed to, so a little bit of a missed timing there by Boa. Boa now putting the cannons down, but I'm concerned whether it's going to be enough or not. More Hydralisks pouring forward. And this is soon going to be a full control group, and the cannons are not yet warped in. The forge is down. Boa doesn't have a, the forge even to plant additional cannons. So these Zealots are all that is standing in the way between Crossy and a quick victory here. I think Crossy realizes it is continuing to pour on that pressure, is poking forward. Probes are coming off the line. That photon cannon is going to be the last cannon, so it's going to be that photon cannon, two zealots, and a handful of probes to try to defend this front line. Crossy diving in, more zealots streaming down. Keep in mind, they do, they do have speed. They do not have that level one weapons upgrade, though, and they are just getting pecked away at by these Hydralisks, and that last cannon has fallen. The forge is back up. Probes are off the line. Even if Boa survives this, he's going to take considerable economic damage, losing several of these probes. Two more cannons warping in, but the Hydralisks are now unopposed on the front. And it looks like Crossy has, in fact, done it. Boa neglecting a bit of cannons, calling GG. By the way, these guys are always playing on Discord and things like that, and they're in the same channel after the fact. So they do call GG. Uh, and then exit out from there. It's not a... Sometimes they're being BM, but I don't think this is one of the... I'm not going to go and say that these guys never do a GG on exit sort of thing, whatever. But I, I'm telling you that in these circumstances, I believe through these matches, they're GGing each other. But anyway, this was a fantastic example and, and perfect execution, honestly, I will say. Well, maybe not absolutely flawless, but you, you get what I'm saying. That was a great execution of what Protoss fear these days. Is that 973 attack, Boa faltering to it this time, despite... What I would say was actually pretty uh, well-scouted opener. Was able to even skip Stargate, amongst other things. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Going to move on to the rest of the series. If you're curious when these were played, by the way, it was... I guess I'll mention that in the next video. Thanks for listening, guys.